Okay, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to be uh, learning practically how to do uh, the calculation of a tracking signal and how to interpret the information that we get from tracking signals. Uh, if you recall, in the previous lecture, we talked about random bias and we talked about our own selection biases. Um, the random biases, as you may recall, um, if we add up all these random biases uh, together, they normally equalize to zero, so there's not much of an impact upon the project, but our choice-related biases that we have uh, when making estimates actually do contribute towards the uncertainty of the project somehow. So we need to figure out how, to, uh, how much of an impact our biases have, and then we can come up with control mechanisms. Right, so in this case, on your screen, you will be um, seeing a Excel spreadsheet now. Um, in column A, we've got time periods. So we've got period one, period two, all the way up to period number eight. So you can take this as a project that's about uh, eight weeks in length, let's right? And then we're estimating that in period one, uh, the estimated cost of uh, the activities that we have to do is going to be $155, and period two is going to be $242, and period three is $46, and $69, and so on and so forth. So for each of the time periods, uh, we have come up with an estimate of how much those activities that have to be performed in that time period are going to cost us. Uh, and these estimates are listed here in column B. In column C then, uh, we have moved uh, sort of away from the planning period now and we've gone and entered the execution period. So in this uh, time period when we actually execute something, we get the actual uh, figures of how much those activities costed us in that uh, given time period. So for example, our estimate was that we'll spend $155 in period one, but we actually spent $163. And then our estimate was that we'll spend $242 in period two, but we ended up spending a little bit less than that. We spent $240. So our estimate was to spend $46 in period three. We ended up spending a little, little bit more than that. So we got $67 and so forth. So column D here is the actual spend that was made when those activities were uh, actually executed. So we're sort of doing this at the end of the project, um, trying to see how much of a bias existed. And then uh, later on, we can learn uh, and we can improve uh, upon these biases and reduce their impact, right? So once we've got these three columns of information with us, the, the time period, the estimate, and the actual, uh, we can start performing some calculations. So in column D, what I'm doing is I'm taking the value uh, from column C, which is the actual, so in this uh, row two, uh, it is 163. And I'm dividing it by the estimated uh, uh, cost that I had planned for uh, spending in period number one, so that is 155. So 163 divided by 155, and we subtract one from it, and we'll get 0.051. In um, D3, what we're doing is 240 my, uh, divided by 242, and we subtract one from it, so that gives us a negative 0 0.08. And in D4, we're doing 67 divided by 46 and subtracting a one from that, and so forth. Right, so all these in, uh, information have been uh, populated for us and we've uh, sort of, you can see the formula um, in the formula uh, area here on the Excel spreadsheet. Um, in column E, what I've done is that I've taken the absolute value of the number that is showing up in uh, column D. So uh, what this does is by taking the absolute value, uh, we are getting rid of the negative sign, only uh, the, the positive uh, number is being shown. The negative sign is, is being dropped here, right? So you, you won't see much difference between the values here. What you will simply see is that the negative sign has been dropped off. So we can add up all the values that we have in column D and that uh, comes out as 0 0.908, and we can add up all the values in column E, and that comes up as a 
uh, 1.281. Right? So, so far, so good. Then we have to calculate the mean absolute uh, ratio. So it is a, a ratio of the mean values that we have, right? So how do we calculate the mean value? So what we're going to do here uh, is that we'll, we'll leave uh, the first one empty, which is F2, because if we uh, try to calculate the mean value, we won't be able to, because here we'll be taking uh, the 0 0.051, uh, but then there's nothing to sort of divide that with. So that normally, uh, that running total idea doesn't work there, right? We'll, we'll basically be getting the 0 0.051 here. So we, we sort of leave that empty. What we do here then is that uh, we come to F3. And what we'll do is that we'll take E2 and E3, add them up together. So we're taking 0 0.051, adding it to 0 0.00. Uh, eight and two, and then because this is one figure and this is the second figure, that is why we're dividing it by two here. So when we uh, do this, we get 0 0.030. In this um, F4, what we're going to do is we'll take these three numbers, the 0 0.051 plus the 0 0.0082 plus 0.4565, and because these are three numbers, we're dividing it by three, so we get 0 0.172. In this uh, F5, we're going to take these four numbers, add them up together, and divide by four. And in F6, we'll take one, two, three, four, five numbers, add them up together, and divide by uh, the numbers, uh, number of numbers. So we're going to divide it by five. And in F um, seven, we're going to take one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, add them up together, and divide by six. So that calculates for us the mean absolute ratio. Once that has been calculated, then we can go to the tracking signal. So in the tracking signal, we're taking this number here, which is uh, D2, and we're adding to it uh, D3. So we're adding these two numbers together, and we are dividing it by uh, the number here in F3, uh, right? This is F and this is three. So we're dividing it by the uh, mean absolute ratio for that particular period. So we're taking this number, adding it to this number and dividing it by this number. And that gives us 1.45. Then we can uh, move to G4. So in that case, we're going to take D2, D3 and D4, and then divided by F4, which is 0 0.172. So that gives us 2.90. And the next one, we're going to have now three numbers. So we'll take D2, D3, D4, and D5. So we have now uh, four numbers, sorry, and we're dividing it by 0 0.162 to give us 3.90. Um, and in, uh, lastly, in G6, we're going to take uh, D2, D3, D4, D5, and D6 and divide it by 0 0.140. So this way we are able to calculate then the tracking signal. So the mean absolute rate ratio to recap is the sum of column E divided by eight and the tracking signal is the addition of entries in column D divided by the number in uh, F in uh, F8, right? So we're, we're sorry, not by F8, but we're taking the uh, relevant number and we're dividing it. So F3, F, uh, sorry, F3, F4, and F5, and so forth. So we're dividing it by that number, right? So the relevant number from column F is being taken. There. So how do we interpret this? The interpretation is that if the estimates are unbiased, the running sum of ratios in column D uh, will be almost close to zero. So you can have a look at column D here, and this is showing us that if our bias, uh, we were unbiased in making our estimates, the running sum of the ratios in this column will be around zero, right? So this is 0 0.05, this is negative 0 0.08, this is 0.456 and so forth. So from this, we get an idea whether we are biased or unbiased. Right, so it's now up to you to uh, understand these figures 
a bit more closely to see whether you perceive them to be near to zero or far away from zero. So we can say that 0 0.05 is a little bit more than uh, zero. So in that way, we can say that there was some degree of bias. 0.00826 has a negative sign. So in this case, there was a negative bias, but it was a very minuscule bias. 0.45 uh, signifies that there was a positive bias and it was slightly towards the higher sign. Right? 0.13 means and, and so forth. Right? So the greater the number here, the greater is going to be the bias. And we are also seeing the signal here, the positive means that there was a positive bias and the negative meant that there was a negative bias. Uh, if we divide the above by the mean absolute ratio, the tracking signal is uh, going to be also very small and that's going to be possibly uh, nearing to zero as well. So here we've got uh, the, the next number uh, which is showing us how how well we are performing as far as the bias is concerned. Right? So if there's considerable bias in the estimates, either positive or negative, the running sum of ratios in column D will grow quite large. So if the, these numbers are big, then there is a uh, chance that the bias was significant, right? So we can have a negative bias, which is uh, negatively significant, and we could have a positive bias, in which we were uh, positively significant in, in our bias. Right? Then we divide by the mean absolute ratio, and this will uh, show us whether the tracking signal is uh, greater than one or less than one. So here is the tracking signal where we are dividing by uh, the figures from here by the mean absolute ratio. So that is giving us the tracking signal. And now we have to look at whether the numbers here in the tracking signal are greater than one or less than one. So in this case, you can clearly see that we've got 1.45, 2.90, 3.90, 4.12, 3 and so forth. And all the numbers in column G are actually now greater than one. And therefore, uh, greater the variability in the estimates, right? So the bigger the number here, the greater the variability in the estimate. So we can see here uh, from column B and C that our estimate was to spend 242, we ended up spending 240. So that means that our actual was quite near to our estimate and that's why uh, here you're, you're not seeing too much of a variability. Here you had a actual spend of 67 and the plan was to spend 46. So you're seeing a 2.90. So there was uh, some degree of variability here. Um, 3.90 here. So there was a much larger variability, right? So as we're going downward uh, in this column, we're seeing that our estimates are becoming more and more variable and there, there's a lot of uh, bias sort of uh, contributing towards our project here. Um, with experience, what would happen with our mean absolute ratio is that our um, biases are going to reduce significantly, uh, but they're never going to reach zero, right? So in, in this case, you can have a look again at mean absolute ratio, and you can see that what we're doing was that we're taking E2 and E3, adding them up together and dividing by two. So we, we were sort of near to zero uh, in certain places, and in certain other places, we're a bit far away from zero. So wherever we're closer to zero, there was a very little variability uh, and uh, our biases were limited, but in places where there were, um, were fur further away from zero, there was greater variability and therefore more biases existed, right? So the idea is that as we uh, become more and more experienced in uh, performing our projects, what would happen is that uh, these numbers will come closer to zero, but they will never reach zero because there's always some degree of uncertainty that is present in the projects, right? So the tracking signals are basically showing us, um, once again, this idea of how much of a bias uh, we had in, in our estimates, uh, and uh, we can learn from these biases, and then we can control for these biases through uh, gaining more experiences in managing our projects. Thank you so very much.